I'm Gabby. Welcome to the Happier Life Project, brought to you by My Possible Self, the free mental health and wellness app that helps you manage and take care of your mental health through all of its videos, tools, strategies, and series in partnership with the Priory Healthcare. Boy, am I excited to share with you this next episode. So excited, in fact, we're going to shortly jump straight into the conversation. Now, we all suffer from negative thoughts. Negative thinking is actually the worst. It can contribute to problems such as social anxiety, depression, stress and low self-esteem. And we can get so lost in these thoughts, especially if they won't go away and keep showing up and showing up, that whether they are true or untrue, we believe them. We let them take over our lives and our emotions, making us, well, miserable. Dr. Russ Harris, who is a best-selling author, world-renowned acceptance and commitment therapy trainer, and a consultant to the World Health Organization, believes the key to managing these pesky voices in our heads is to accept them and diffuse ourselves from the messages that the mind continuously conjures up that do not serve us. And in this conversation, you are going to learn how and why we can do this. And you can even take part in some simple and very effective exercises during the next 40 minutes too. So ready to find a healthier, happier you? Let's get started. You're a world-renowned trainer in acceptance commitment therapy, or ACT, as well as being a therapist and a coach with a background in medicine. You're the author of several best-selling ACT-based textbooks and self-help books. The Happiness Trap, which I've got here is an international bestseller with over a million copies sold worldwide and editions published in over 30 languages. And I believe the second edition of The Happiness Trap has recently dropped in the UK with 50% more new material. Is it on Audible? Because I feel like, I don't know what else you could could have left out, to be honest. I've got the original in my <laughs> hand. but <laughs> uh, Yeah, no, uh, gosh, I oh. I feel so embarrassed uh, hearing all of that, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, no, it is on Audible as well, yeah, and uh, and the second edition is out, yeah. Oh, brilliant. We'll see 50% more material on how to come out of the, the traps of, be, of why we're not happy. I mean, I'm, I'm in, I'm sold. So basically, we're talking to the holy grail of ACT experts, and you're also the creator of ACT materials for the World Health Organization too, no big deal. Uh, So before we go into the obvious question, what is ACT? I believe you're originally from Liverpool. Uh, That's right. Yes, from a part of Liverpool called West Derby. Um, I don't have much of an accent. When I go back there, people go, where are you from? You're not from here. (laughs) Where are you from? Like, no. Um, <laughs> no, but you did spend most of you the the like um the early years in the UK, and then you went to university in the UK before you went over to Australia. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, I, I grew up in Liverpool, and then I, I went to, to university in Newcastle, and um, and then I went to Australia, where I've been for the last thirty years. So uh, the accents right. a bit of a, a hodgepodge of things. People tell me I sound Australian <laughs> now, but I, I don't know if that's the case. I think there's a bit of a twang. <laughs> Um, okay, well, let's get stuck in. What is ACT and how is it different to CBT, which is, I think, a lot more people are more familiar with that term or, and that method. So what is ACT? Well, ACT is, uh, the, as you mentioned, acceptance and commitment therapy, which is a, an unsounding name, but reflects a key message in this model. Uh, accept what's out of your personal control and commit to action that improves your life. Um, and mm. there's basically three strands to this model of therapy. Uh, one is basically uh, learning a set of psychological skills to, uh, I call them unhooking skills, so ways to kind of unhook yourself from difficult thoughts, feelings, and emotions uh, so that they kind of lose their impact. They can't jerk you around. They can't kind of hook you and pull you out of your life and pull you into self-defeating patterns of behavior. The second strand is getting in touch with your values, which are like your heart's deepest desires for how you want to behave as a human being, how you want to treat yourself and others 
and the world around you. And then you use those values as a compass to, to guide your actions, to take action and do things that make life meaningful. And the third strand is really you know, focusing skills, really being able to focus your attention on what's important right now and engage in what you're doing uh, so that you can do it well and make the most of it if it's something pleasurable or enjoyable. And, and those kind of three skill sets come together to help people develop this ability called psychological flexibility, which is your ability to be in the present moment right here, right now, kind of focusing your attention on what's important, uh, to open up and make room for all the difficult thoughts and feelings that may be showing up in this moment, just kind of let them flow through you without sweeping you away, and to, to do what matters, to act effectively guided by your values, sort of be present, open up, do what matters. Mm -hmm. And the greater your ability to do that, the greater your quality of life, uh, the greater your health and well-being. This correlates with, um, uh, you know, recovery from or protection against uh, things like depression and anxiety and PTSD and, and even with, uh, you know, psychosis and addiction. So it's a, a very, very mm -hmm. uh, useful skill to develop, this ability to be present and open and do what matters. In your book, actually, the stats might even be higher now. You said that 80% of our thoughts are negative. So when we're talking about un unhooking from them we're, and not getting swept away with the tide it's a tsunami <laughs> that we're, we're dealing with on a daily basis yeah. so it sounds so great and like oh that sounds like the absolute dream and and how much peace must we have from our minds if we can achieve it but 80 percent plus of those thoughts are bad and and unpleasant yeah, well, so, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you raised that statistic. Yeah, because because it's completely normal and natural to have negative thoughts. And, you know, there's there's no one who's eliminated them. And the, the, the message that, that's kind of out there in pop culture is negative thoughts are bad and you've got to eliminate them and you've got to think positively and don't worry and be happy. And that's just setting yeah. people up for failure. That's so unrealistic. And, you know, negative thoughts are not necessarily bad and positive thoughts are not necessarily good. For example, you know, if you're uh, if you get uh, hooked by positive thoughts, it can lead to inflated self-confidence, narcissism, arrogance. It, you know, if you're drunk and you have the positive thought, well, I'm the world's greatest driver. I can drive safely even when I'm drunk. You know, if you get hooked by mm. that thought, you're going to have a car crash and end up in prison. So uh, whereas negative thoughts can be very helpful if your negative thoughts are telling you like, oh, I'm going to fail for the, the, the that exam next week. You know, that can motivate you actually to do the homework that you need to do and the preparation you need to do to pass that exam. So in the mm. ACT approach, it's not really about whether your thoughts are positive or negative or optimistic or pessimistic. It's about whether they're helpful. You know, if I let these thoughts that my mind is generating if I let them guide what I say and do does that help me to build the sort of life I want to build live the sort of life I want to live behave like the sort of person I really want to be and, and what we learn to do is kind of use helpful thoughts to to guide our actions and unhook from all of those unhelpful thoughts that are guaranteed to just keep showing up again and again and again and again and again yeah. Why do they show up more than the, the helpful ones? I think for a lot of people, like, why are we wired this way? Well, uh, you know, if if you believe in evolution, it's uh, it, it, this goes right back to basic survival. Um, you know, what drives uh, evolution is the survival of the fittest. And so, you know, if there was you know, let's go back 300,000 years, our species, Homo sapiens, scientists think we appeared about 300,000 years ago. Now, at that point in history, we've got the same basic needs as every other animal on the planet, food, water, shelter, and sex. Uh, not all at the same time, it gets a bit messy, but uh, <laughs> those are the basic needs. But none of those things are important if you get killed. The, the top priority of the human mind, the job it's got to do better than any other job, is to stop you from getting killed. If it doesn't do that job brilliantly well, you won't live in long enough to pass on your genes to the next generation to have kids and, and you know, so forth. So, 
your mind uh, 300,000 years ago has to be constantly on the lookout for things that could hurt or harm you. Is there a, you know, that shadow on the horizon? Is that a friend or a foe? In the back of that cave, is there a wolf or a bear? That rustling sound in the bushes, is that a, <laughs> you know, is that a sparrow or is that a saber-toothed tiger? You know, there ever was a cave man or cave woman that was Mr. or Mrs. Positive Thinker, always optimistic, always looking on the bright side, you know, oh, that rustling sound in the bushes, that's just a sparrow, you know, chomp, <laughs> they didn't live very long, that's not your ancestor, that's not the one you evolved from, you came from the one that was always on the lookout for things that could hurt or harm them, and now after, you know, 300,000 years of evolution, the human mind is continually doing this, you know, uh, continually on the look out uh, you're not consciously aware of it all the time but it's going on even in your sleep <laughs> and you know i often ask audiences i say you know put your hand up if you've been awake at three o'clock in the morning with your mind warning you about things that might go wrong you know every hand in the audience goes up right uh, you know. yeah yeah it happened to me that three o'clock this morning actually <laughs> me too me too <laughs> really that is actually quite reassuring because yeah catastrophizing um i'm sure you have a lot of patients that come to you with this and we know that it's in the future but we just think we go to the worst case scenario and we and because it loops and it's this pesky thought that we just can't disassociate from we believe it don't we and then it triggers these unpleasant emotions and then here we are in this awful spiral of misery Absolutely. You know, there's a number of cognitive processes that can just completely wrap us up wrap us up you know uh, one is um is worrying uh, you know uh, uh, worrying or catastrophizing which is future oriented about bad things that are going to happen in the future then there's ruminating which is past oriented going over bad things that have happened in the past and why did mm -hmm. this happen and what does that mean and so forth um obsessing which can be over the past or the future and it's just so easy to get caught up in these streams of unhelpful thoughts and so one mm. of the it's torture <laughs> it's torture. We're, tor we're torturing ourselves aren't we well it, you know so i, I kind of you know people often get the wrong idea that their mind is out to sabotage them or hurt them and it's not the case what what it's useful to consider it that your mind is like an overly helpful friend have you ever had one of those friends that was just trying so hard to help they actually um, got in the way and became annoying and uh, caused problems for you mm. <laughs> yeah that's the a, mind <laughs> perhaps a friend or a relative maybe uh, or they're just a Debbie Downer. They always are like, oh, you know, yeah. thinking on the negative rather than the positive. Yeah, exactly. And that's basically what your mind's trying to do. You can take any kind of negative thought pattern and you will basically find that it's basically your mind trying to help you, like worrying, catastrophizing. That's your mind trying to prepare you for, keep you safe. You know, this bad stuff could happen. You need to be prepared. Kind of ruminating mm -hmm. on the past. That's your mind trying to help you learn from the past. Let's learn from this so that you're better prepared if it happens again in the future. You can take action. Mm -hmm. What if it's unhelpful? What if it's things from the past that aren't necessarily signposting you in the right direction for the future but it's just you're kind of locked on to that absolutely well that's unfortunately what often happens so the kind of the, the intentional purpose of your mind is to help but very often uh, it actually becomes unhelpful like one of those overly helpful friends you know a good example is self-judgment uh, our, our minds generate all sorts of harsh negative self-judgments and that's basically your mind trying to beat you into shape it's like stop doing this do something different shape up watch out if you don't change what you're doing this bad stuff's going to happen to you but that's a very oh. ineffective way of motivating people that's uh, that leads people to kind of end up miserable and depressed you know but that the in purpose underlying that is your mind is basically a problem solving machine it's trying to solve problems keep you safe give you what you want Mm. You made me think about as well the different ways that we try and avoid these thoughts by pushing them aside, trying to distract ourselves, um, numbing ourselves with maybe booze or comfort eating or, you know, choose your own adventure there. But that's actually the most unhelpful thing we can do. It's better to is it better to address them or is it better to to acknowledge them and then try and carry on? Well, you know. Uh, again, that's a good question. You know, the, the, 
most of the strategies you've mentioned there involve kind of getting into a sort of battle with your thoughts, you know, I'm trying to push them yeah. away or suppress them or fight them or challenge them. It takes a lot of time and energy and effort. And what we know is that a lot of those strategies actually have a rebound effect. You can sort of push the thoughts out of your head for a while, but they actually come back with greater and greater frequency. Uh, so, for example, I don't know if anyone recommends this anymore, but certainly in the old days, uh, CBT programs used to recommend thought stopping. You'd uh, snap an elastic band or you'd shout stop or you would imagine a stop sign in your head when these unwanted thoughts showed up. Uh, hopefully no one recommends that anymore because the research is clear. It does make the thoughts go away for a short space of time, but over time they bounce back with more and more frequency and intensity. So it's wow. uh, it's a little bit like trying to hold a ball under the water. You know, you can you can do it for a while. <laughs> but sooner yeah. or later your arm gets tired and when you release it the ball goes pow and pops back up again you know mm. um, so trying to suppress fight argue challenge your thoughts is often counterproductive um, and takes a lot of energy I mean most of us have experienced this thing where we start debating with our thoughts you kind of get into a it's a bit like those old Tom and Jerry cartoons where you've got a you know a, a devil on one side and an angel on the other side, and you know you you start having this battle between your thoughts, and very hard to yeah. focus on what you're doing or or be engaged in your life while you're all caught up in this internal debate. So mm. um, ACT uh, you know teaches these unhooking skills. Uh, the technical name for them is cognitive diffusion skills big word um but kind of helping you to sort of diffuse from your thoughts and hook from them you allow them to be there and you allow them yeah. to come and stay and go in their own good time without getting into a fight with them without trying to push them away without trying to hide from them a bit like uh you know just letting cars come and go past your house you you, you don't rush out and try to stop the traffic you just let the cars come and go Mm, yeah, I remember that. You talked about that, I think, in, in your book, um, or if not your book, definitely your YouTube videos about fusion and then diffusion. So fusion is where that thought, which is just a story, but we take it and we accept it as real. And that's the fusion process, right? And then diffusion is what you're saying that is a you do within the ACT model, which is yeah. pulling yourself away from that story and and sort of dispelling it or, or seeing it for what it is yeah that's a yeah seeing it for what it is yeah i mean uh, you know when you fuse with a thought whether it's positive or negative or true or false it, it, you know what happens is that thought has a huge impact over your behavior so when you're fused with thoughts or hooked by thoughts uh, your thoughts uh, seem like very important things that you need to give all your attention. They seem like mm. rules or commands that you have to obey. They seem like very good advice that you should follow. They seem like uh, the absolute truth. And, and so they have a lot of power over you. Whereas when you yeah. defuse from thoughts, when you see them for what they are, that thoughts are basically words and pictures combining together in your head. And when you can sort of see in a state of diffusion that your thoughts are words and pictures, it reduces their impact. The, the, the thought may or may not be true. It's certainly not a, a rule or a command that you have to obey or follow. Uh, it's certainly not something you have to give all your attention. Uh, and it's certainly not something you have to fight with or run away from. So, you know, the thought's still there, but it's lost a lot of its impact. So what are some, a couple of the techniques in terms of diffusing that you found to be really effective? Well, the, the first technique that I, I uh, invite people to try around, uh, to, to play with, is, is just a very simple one. Maybe your listeners could actually do this. If they bring to mind, uh, let, let's work with a negative self-judgment, as we've all got lots of them. That's a good one. So if, you, if your listeners sort of bring to mind a, a, a short negative self-judgment, like, uh, you know, for example, Gabby, if you could listen into my mind when it's beating me up and giving me a hard time, uh, this is what you right. would hear. Now, you wouldn't hear this all on the same day, but if you listened in enough, you would hear, and, and I invite listeners to see, you know, if I listened into your minds, would I hear something similar? This is what my mind says. Uh, I'm fat, I'm old, I'm stupid, I'm incompetent, uh, I'm an underachiever, I'm weird, I don't fit in, I'm boring. Uh, if you knew what I was really like, you wouldn't like me. I'm a, a lousy father, mm. I'm a hypocrite. 
it. Uh, you know, I, and I could go on, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm unlovable. I'm not good enough for a relationship. All of that yeah. stuff as well. You have mm -hmm. some of those thoughts yourself, Gabby? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this is the big secret. Everyone's got lots of these thoughts. You know, uh, it's uh, so um, uh, if your listeners want to just take a, one of those sort of negative self judgments and just put it into a short sentence, I am X or I'm not Y enough, uh, I'm fat or I'm stupid or I'm not smart enough. What I'm going to ask them to do is to listen to, to buy into this thought believe it as much as you can for about 10 seconds which will obviously make you feel a bit yucky um, mm. and then I'm going to take you through a simple diffusion or unhooking technique to help you take a bit of the impact out of that thought so if uh, if you and your listeners are willing to do this bring to mind now a, mm. a nasty negative self-judgment mm. and don't challenge or dispute it buy into it I'm fat, I'm stupid, I'm not smart enough, I'm a lousy mother or father, whatever. Starting now, buy into it. Believe it as much as you can. See if you can really let it hook you. Let it pull you in. Now, silently replay that thought with these words in front. I am having the thought that. So I'm having the thought that I'm incompetent. Just notice what happens. And now replay it again. I notice I'm having the thought that. So a slightly longer phrase. I notice I'm having the thought that I'm stupid. And so uh, what happened for you, uh, Gabby, as you did that? Um... I think these thoughts, are, you know, they're too deep rooted that it's I see what you're doing. But for me, I'm still sat in there. I'm still believing the thoughts. Maybe that's just today. A different day would be a different story. Yeah. Um, but however, yeah, it's like distancing yourself, isn't it, from... Did you get a sense What's of distancing, on? a sense of stepping back, seeing the thought? Yeah. yeah, and that's definitely. that's important because we're not trying to stop you from believing these thoughts. You know, that's another big difference between ACT and CBT. It's not about whether you believe the thoughts or not. It's not about whether they're true or false. It's about seeing oh. them. Uh, their words and pictures you know and and in, in the app model we're not really interested in whether you believe them or think they're true or false what we're interested in is do they help you to be the person you want to be and do the things you want to do so it's kind of like when you're hooked by these thoughts you're not even really aware that you're having them they're just dominating what you do but if you unhook a bit you can say okay well here are these thoughts showing up, whether I believe them or not. The question is, what do I want to do? Do I want to let these things guide my arms and my, my actions and my hands and my feet and the words that I say? Or do I want to acknowledge, okay, this is what my mind's giving me in this moment. Here's, uh, mm. you know, these thoughts are normal and natural. And in some sense, it's my mind trying to help, but they're not really particularly going to help me right now. So let's helping. come back to my mm. values. What do I want to do right now? What's important to me? And, and so, mm. you know, when I first introduced diffusion, uh, it's not uncommon that people, uh, uh, particularly with self-judgments, they'll say, but it's true, but it's true, you know, I really yeah. am. Uh, yeah. I, I well, if you've been thinking it for 20, 30 years, then it's not an overnight win, is it? Because otherwise everybody would be doing it and, and much happier. <laughs> well, exactly. So it's not um, <laughs> it's not about whether they're true or false. It, you, you know, if I give you a, an example, uh, this guy came to see me uh, with a diagnosis of depression, and he was a, a massively overweight guy and deeply depressed. And he had a, a very harsh negative inner critic. You know, his, his mind was saying, I'm fat, I'm disgusting, I'm worthless. I, you know, I'm killing myself with all the, the crap that I'm eating. Uh, and, you know, we started doing a bit of diffusion. And I took him through that little technique that I just demonstrated. And he said, mm. but it's true. I really am fat. And he, like, pulled up his shirt uh, to show me. <laughs> oh, wow. You know. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, you know, I kind of uh, had the conversation with him that I've just been having with you. I said, look, you know, in this approach, we're not really interested in whether your thoughts are true or false. So the question is, when your mind starts speaking to you this way and saying, I'm fat, I'm useless, I'm worthless, if you get hooked by those thoughts, what happens? You go, well, I'll get depressed, mate. Yeah. And, and then what happens? Well, then I 
then I'll eat loads of crap. Is that okay? So, yeah. you know, kind of getting hooked by those thoughts is not particularly helpful for you. And then I kind of mm. said, let, let, let's talk about values for a moment. So one of my favorite ways of getting people in touch with their values is, is with a magic wand. Uh, I, I said, you know, I've got a magic wand here. I wave this magic wand so that you can treat your body the way you really want to treat it. Okay, and nothing will stop you. No thoughts, no feelings. You will treat your body the way you really want to. How would you treat your body? And he said, well, or well, wouldn't eat so much shit, mate. Said, okay, so, so uh, <laughs> what would you eat instead? Well, you know, I guess, uh, I'd, oh, I don't know, I'd eat more, more healthy stuff. Yeah, okay, so you'd eat different food, more healthy food. Any other ways you'd treat your body differently? Well, you wouldn't wouldn't sit around all day just watching crap on the deli. Okay, so you might move more, exercise more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like <laughs> there's an important value here that's getting lost. I'm going to call that value self care. And if you were in touch with the value mm. of self caring for yourself, you'd be doing different things, eating differently, exercising more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now uh, when your mind comes in and starts saying, I'm fat, I'm useless, I'm worthless, you know, if you get all caught up in that, does it help you to live those values and do the things that's important? Well, no, nah. no, nah, it kind of hooks you mm. and pulls in the opposite direction. So there's this kind of interplay between living our values. You know, it's not just about diffusion. It's also seeing what do I want to be doing if I wasn't let these automatic thoughts to take what I do, what would I be doing differently? And then we can ask the wow. question, you know, is these thoughts helping me to live my values or are they getting in the way? Wow, that is such powerful stuff. I mentioned at the start of the interview about some of your YouTube videos. Um, I really responded to the radio doom and gloom one because I have a background in radio. So, um, yeah, but just listening to you with the, the one story again, it's just you have this very visual and simple way of helping us to, like, get to grips with some really complex stuff because the mind is so complex, isn't it? It is. It is very much, you know, you can just start by kind of noticing your thoughts and just uh, recognizing that they are normal to have. Uh, that makes a huge difference, too, because if we kind of, oh, there's something wrong with me for having all of these negative thoughts. Well, well, well now you've mm -hmm. got two problems. You've got the thoughts and then all the judgments about something being wrong with you for having them and then all the struggles that create. Uh, so, yeah, you know, our mind is a complex uh, is a complex thing for sure. Um, and yet mm. there are some simple skills we can do to, to handle our mind more effectively. Mm. So when it comes to like our feet, that we've talked loads about the thoughts and the thoughts of these stories and, um, and, and some amazing ways of disassociating ourselves with them. But like if the damage has been done and we, we're, we're locked in and then this triggers the emotions and the painful feelings, and then we treat those feelings and in same in the same way of the thoughts. It's just it's almost like we're down to the next stage of like the awful cycle. We try and numb them or suppress them because we don't because it feels horrible. So, have you got any suggestions there for where we've allowed the thought to become something that we believe is real? Maybe it's something that's coming up in the future and we're just expecting the worst case scenario or the outcome is just awful to even think about but we believe it's going to happen so then we've got the emotion behind it and now we're feeling anger or grief or or whatever what yeah. what happens then well it, it's um so it's a complex interaction you know difficult thoughts can trigger difficult feelings and emotions and vice versa you know painful emotions trigger difficult thoughts and also the environment around us triggers difficult thoughts and feelings and then how we behave in response to that also impacts our thoughts and feelings so uh, all of these mm. things feed off each other and and what often happens is you know in, in really challenging circumstances when there are really difficult thoughts and feelings showing up i use the analogy of an emotional storm an emotional storm blows up you know maybe lots of difficult thoughts whirling around in our head lots of painful feelings and sensations in our body uh, you know maybe an anger storm or an anxiety storm or a guilt storm or a sadness storm and uh, mm -hmm. and what happens is that storm kind of sweeps 
keep this away. You know, we, we can't focus on what's important. We can't act effectively. So the skill that I uh, introduce people to, I call it dropping anchor. And, uh, you know, it, it's like uh, if you had a boat or a, and it was sailing into the harbour, and uh, there was a big storm about to blow up, the first thing you'd do is drop anchor. Uh, if you don't drop anchor, then when that storm hits, your boat's going to get swept out to sea. And so this mm -hmm. exercise, dropping anchor, is a way of uh, working with your own inner emotional and cognitive storms, if you like. Anchors don't control storms. When you drop an anchor, it doesn't make a storm go away. An anchor holds the boat steady and the storm will come and go in its own good time. And it's the same uh, with this uh, with this psychological skill of dropping anchor. It, it's not actually a way to control your thoughts and feelings, but it's a way to hold yourself steady, take control of your arms and your legs, focus your attention on what's important, and let these thoughts and feelings uh, flow through you without sweeping you away. So, I mean, if you want, I can take listeners through this. It'll take about five minutes. I don't know if we've got enough time. I mean, yeah, if if you don't mind, this is all amazing stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned the World Health Organization. You know, that um, protocol I wrote for them was an app protocol for use in refugee camps. And they've been using it in, you know, in places in refugee camps in Syria and Uganda and Turkey and so forth. You know, where the, there's often uh, 200,000 to 400,000 people living in tents in these dire circumstances wow. you know no quick easy solutions you can be stuck in that camp for years uh, sometimes even decades uh, in very difficult circumstances but nonetheless what the world health organization found was was some simple act skills uh, made a difference to these people it reduced their depression it reduced their ptsd uh, it gave them a better quality of life it didn't magically fix all their problems but just by giving them some skills to, to handle their thoughts and feelings better, it made a difference to their quality of life. And this yeah. dropping anchor, it was, was what, uh, it's the first skill we teach in that program. So it's, it's a very useful skill, it seems to be well received by, by cultures all around the world. So let me uh, take your listeners through it then. Um, mm. So um, just a reminder, that this is not a way to control your thoughts and feelings. We're not trying to get rid of unwanted thoughts or feelings or make you feel good. Just like, uh, you know, anchors don't get rid of storms. They hold boats steady. And that's what we're aiming to do here. So um, all dropping anchor skills are based on a simple formula called the ACE formula. The A is for acknowledge your thoughts and feelings or acknowledge what's showing up inside you. Uh, the C is for connect with your body. So you can do anything that helps you to connect with your body, whether it's moving, stretching, breathing, anything that kind of just gives that sense of connection with your physical body. And the E is for engage in what you're doing, uh, engage in the world around you, engage in the activity you're doing. And so we're going to cycle through that uh, ACE formula about three or four times. And I just invite your listeners to notice what happens as you do that. So okay. let's start with the A. Just take a moment to acknowledge uh, what thoughts are showing up for you right now, what your mind's saying, whether it's whirring away or whether it's quiet. And acknowledge what you're feeling in your body. Is there any areas of tightness, tension, sensations in your chest or tummy, particular feelings like sadness or anxiety? Just acknowledge what's there. Acknowledge means that we just notice it's there and, you know, we don't try to avoid it or get rid of it or fight with it. It's just there. Now, the C is connect with your body. So what I am doing as I'm talking to you is I'm pushing my feet into the floor and I'm straightening my back in the chair and I'm having a stretch. And I encourage your listeners to do something similar. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you're driving a car, you're not going to be stretching, but you can still move your feet and adjust your position, something that gets you into your body. Um, some people like to, you know, take a slow, deep breath, and notice the movement of the breath, and anything that just helps you. So there's thoughts and feelings showing up right now, and there's a body around them that you can move and connect with. And around this body, there's a whole world. So look around you and notice what you can see and hear. Breathe in the air, notice what it's like. And kind of get a sense, there's thoughts and feelings showing up. There's a, a body around them you can move and a world around you. 
that you can engage in and refocus your attention on what you're doing right now, uh, which is listening to me and doing this exercise. So bring that attention mm -hmm. back. So that's the, the basic formula. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to talk a little bit less this time around. So once again, take a moment to acknowledge your thoughts and feelings. What's your mind saying? What's happening in your body? And this time, see if you can silently describe the thoughts and feelings just with a little sentence like, I am noticing thoughts about or I am noticing feelings of. Here's a feeling of anxiety. Here's my mind worrying. Just a, a short sentence, acknowledging it's there. Not trying to avoid it, control it, get rid of it. Just acknowledging this is what's showing up inside me right now. And then once again, connecting with your body. So once again, I'm pushing my feet into the floor. I'm straightening my back. I'm having a stretch. I invite listeners to move, stretch. Uh, as I said, some people like to breathe, take a slow, deep breath. Really just anything that gets that body moving. So there's thoughts and feelings and a body around them that you can move. And then once again, engaging in the world, opening your eyes and ears, looking around, what can you see? What can you hear? Breathing in the air. So there's thoughts and feelings, body around them, a world around your body. And let's just do that one last time. Okay, so once again, acknowledging what kind of thoughts and feelings are showing up right now. They may be the same as before. They may have changed. They may be positive, negative, pleasant, unpleasant. Just whatever they are, acknowledge. These are the thoughts and feelings showing up here in this moment. And once again, connecting with your body can be similar way than before uh, or different. I, once again, I'm stretching and pushing my feet down. I'm shifting in my chair. That really connects me with my body. So I'm aware of my thoughts and feelings and I'm also in touch with my body, moving it and I'm also engaging in the world around me. So again, notice what you can see and hear. Look around, notice a few things you maybe didn't notice before, maybe didn't hear before. Again, that sense of where you are, what you're doing. And again, refocusing your attention on what you're doing right now, which is finishing off this exercise with me. So... That's the basic mm. exercise. Uh, and, you know, uh, you can do long versions of that or short versions of that with practice. You can do that in a few seconds. What, uh, what happened for you as you well, did that exercise? Um, again, at first, a bit of resistance. Um, anxiety tends to, for me, be in the pit of the stomach. So I was, um, you know, I'm, I do get anxious. So, but then at, as we did it again and again, I did feel that kind of that that feeling in the stomach started to um, lessen and quieten. Um, yeah, really, really helpful. Goodness. Thank you. You know, so as a nice bonus, often uncomfortable thoughts and feelings do reduce. You know, that does quite often happen. But that is the bonus. That's not the point. It's just like. If you oh. drop, if a boat drops anchor, you know, if the storm dies down, that's a nice bonus. The anchor didn't make the storm die down. So what we mm. are quite often find, what happens as people do that exercise is they stop resisting or fighting their thoughts and feelings. And as a result, actually, they do reduce. I mean, this is the interesting thing with ACT. There's over 3,000 published studies, and we see that symptoms come down and down and down in depression, anxiety, addiction, but not from trying to get rid of the thoughts and feelings, not from trying to control them, but rather from just learning this ability to kind of step back and let them be there and let them flow through you and let them come and stay and go in their own good time. So I say to my clients, you know, look, if that happens, then enjoy it. Nice bonus. But I say, please don't think that's the point. If you take this dropping anchor away and start using it to try to get rid of your anxiety, you're going to be back here next week telling me it's not working. It's a bonus to be right. enjoyed. It's not the point. you know. Uh, it's, it's learning to live with these thoughts and not letting them take over your life. They've got, they're not yeah. going to disappear, right? 
Absolutely. You know, there's numerous different skills. Uh, so, you know, we, uh, you, you, the idea is that you build on these skills bit by bit, piece by piece. But there's never going to come a day when you have a, a stress-free life. You know, there will be problems. Life is full of problems. Uh, a full human life comes with the full range of emotions, uh, you know, not just the ones that feel good. And your mind mm. has evolved to think negatively. So throughout your life, there's going to be lots and lots of difficult thoughts and feelings showing up. So it's really, it's about learning how to take the impact out of them, take the power out of them, uh, learn how to let them uh, I often use the phrase let them flow through you uh, not sweeping you away not fighting against them just let them flow through you while you uh, take control of your actions live your values do things that are meaningful and focus your attention on what you're doing if you're doing something enjoyable you'll get much more pleasure out of it if you really focus on it if you're doing something mm -hmm. important you'll do it much better if you focus on it that one of the problems is that we're so caught up in our thoughts and feelings a lot of the time we're distracted we're on autopilot so we don't really yeah. get the pleasure from doing enjoyable things and when we're doing important things we don't do them very well Mm. Do, does replacing the unhelpful thoughts with positive ones, does that help? If we can't get rid of it, can we try replacing it? Does that not work? <laughs> well, I say to clients, you know, look, if, if you if your first language is English and, and you learn Hungarian, well, now you've got Hungarian and English. English doesn't disappear. Um, so you can mm. certainly uh, learn new ways of thinking, but that doesn't get rid of the old ones. And this is one of the things they forget to tell you on positive thinking programs. You know, learn to think positively, but that's not going to magically stop all of this other stuff showing up. These are, are deeply entrenched neuronal pathways. Um, mm. uh, but what ACT does is rather than it's a little bit different from some other models uh, where they kind of go in and they challenge the thought content and try to come up with a positive thought. What we do is kind of unhook from the unhelpful thought, which may be positive or negative, may be true or false. We kind of unhook from the unhelpful thought. And then we come back to our values. Now, I guess you could say that values are a form of positive thinking, but that's not what people usually mean by positive thinking. So I'm, I'm not comfortable with that way of describing it. But values okay. are a way of thinking. It's like, okay, if I want to be the person I want to be right now, do the things that are important to me, uh, how can I put these values into play? What's important in this moment? Um, many of these kind of diffusion skills or unhooking skills also involve thinking. So, for example, a, a popular one is naming the story. So you put all these thoughts, feelings, emotions, memories into one big container. Let's suppose it was a book or a documentary that magically contained all your thoughts and feelings and memories related to this particular issue. And we give it a title, mm. uh, the something something story. Uh, so the generic catch all version is the not good enough story. Um, but, mm. you know, people can come up with their own title, the black hole story, the, the stupid Susan story, the old and lonely story, you know, whatever it is, you know. Um, right. And and the, the idea is that whenever a thought, feeling, emotion or memory that's connected to this story shows up, you acknowledge it. You go, ah, there's the not good enough story. I know that one. Aha. You know, and then you, you drop anchor, focus your attention, get in touch with your values, get on with your life. So another kind of diffusion technique is called thanking your mind. So this plays into the idea that your mind's basically an overly helpful friend. So your mind starts telling you that I'm not good enough story and you go, ah, here it is again. Here's the not good enough story. Thanks, mind. I know you're trying to help and it's okay. Mm -hmm. I've got this handled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get back to your values. Start doing what's important. Focus your attention. Wow. I'm Dr. Russ Harris, this has just been such a fantastic conversation. Th I mean, thank you for sharing all these, you know, wonderful strategies I can't think of anybody who's going to listen to this that isn't going to want to go and buy the happiness trap now because <laughs> so you go into a lot more detail, of, especially this new edition with 50% more content. I'm definitely going to go for the audible version so that I can kind of, I like to listen and, and walk for me. That's really good therapy. So it's thehappinesstrap.com to learn more. Yeah, the, the, if, if, for people kind of interested in, in self-help and uh, you know personal development, thehappinesstrap.com is 
if if there happen to be therapists or coaches or counselors listening to this that are looking for mm-hmm. uh, professional uh, development or learning about ACT, then the website they probably want is uh, psychwire.com. Brilliant. Um, so two more questions as we bring this conversation to a close. Can you, because this is the Happier Life Project, like, can you define what, what is happiness to you? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> the book's called The Happiness Trap because common ideas about happiness are, are misleading, inaccurate, and will actually make you miserable mm. if you hold on to them too tightly. And one of these is the, the popular notion of happiness. Most people, if you ask them what happiness is, they'll say it's feeling good or, you know, it's a good feeling. And that's a very recent idea of happiness. There's probably only really been around for about a century. Throughout most of human history, happiness has been defined not as feeling good, but as doing good, uh, as living by your values, living a meaningful life, doing what's purposeful. So the ancient Greeks had two different words. You know, hedimonia, from where we get the word hedonism, was all about pleasure and feeling good. And, and that's what most people think of happiness today. But they also had a word called eudaimonia, which was about living by your values, living a meaningful life, behaving like the person you really want to be deep in your heart. And that concept is totally aligned with ACT. And so I would define happiness uh, not as feeling good, but I would define happiness as living a rich, full and meaningful life while feeling the full range of human emotions. (laughs) And that includes Mm. both the pleasant ones and the unpleasant ones. Wow. And I I have to ask this question because I ask it to every guest and it's to, to bring everything full circle and back to the title of the podcast and this episode and you've already shared so so much that maybe it's something that you've already given us to do but I ask every guest to set us some homework what is a simple project that we can do based on unhooking from the unhelpful thoughts that will help us on our journey towards building a happier life I would recommend is is that you practice dropping anchor throughout the day you can do the longer exercises to build up the skill and then you can just do shorter 10 second versions you just notice what you're feeling push your feet into the floor look around you take control of your actions Um, if you want I can give you some free audio recordings if you're able to share those with your listeners yeah we can put them on the app that's for sure if that Um, would be okay yeah, I'll give you recordings varying from two minutes to 11 minutes that people can practice with. Practice, you know, one of them every day and then just look for little opportunities throughout the day to drop anchor. You don't have to wait till an emotional storm blows up. You know, a, a boat will drift mm. out of the harbour even when the weather's good. You know, we drift off all day. We get caught up in our thoughts and feelings uh, and we drift off, you know. Uh, so mm. when you kind of notice that and drop an anchor, and refocus, it brings you back. It brings you back into the present moment. That's so incredible. So we'll put those on the My Possible Self app, which is free to download. So um, if you haven't already got it, you can get it from your app store and and check out those recordings. Oh, Dr. Ross Harris, thank you so much for today. What an absolute pleasure. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, you rock. Thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> oh, gosh, isn't Dr. Ross Harris absolutely incredible? Since our chat, I have been practicing some of his techniques and I've found them to be so helpful and effective. So thanks again to Dr. Russ Harris and thank you to you for making it through to the end of this episode of the Happier Life Project with me, Gabby Sanderson. If you are suffering with your mental health, there is a crisis button on the My Possible Self app, which will signpost you to the contact information for immediate expert advice. For those of you who are listening, not on the app, but on one of the podcast platforms, the My Possible Self app is completely free to download so you don't need to worry about it costing you anything if you are in need of some professional help. Make sure you subscribe and leave a review if you found this episode helpful. And to find and follow us on social media, we are at My Possible Self and I've been at Radio Gabby. So until the next one, do take care and bye for now.